Hello everybody, my name is Aaron, and three months ago, I found an Alienware laptop in a box on the side of the road labeled free. So I began the fixes. I removed the bottom cover. Armed with a pack of alcohol wipes, I started to clean. Immediately it hit me. I had been fixing computers and laptops since I was 12 years old but I'd never seen anything like this. There it was, absolutely disgusting and smeared on everything. Every time I wiped, more would ooze out. Every crack, every crevice, every manufactured seam had more and more of this brown goo. It also had a sharp, pungent smell. No, it is not poop, trust me. I licked it to rule that one out. However, it did take me a couple of swigs to figure out that the brown oozing fluid was curry. I'm not sure what kind of sick curry fantasies the previous owner played out with this laptop, but it definitely didn't happen only one time. Even the ports were filled with caked on dried curry. I can still smell the curry on my fingertips. <sighs> to this day. Ugh. <laughs> I went for one final wipe down a week later and more curry came pouring out. If we really want a full scope of what happened, we're gonna have to go back over 13 years ago. I, like every 17-year-old kid in 2007, wanted an Alienware laptop. I can remember loading the Alienware webpage and preloading my perfect laptop over and over again. In the summer of 2007, while purchasing the laptop, I selected the lowest on every option available and hit checkout on the basiest of the base models. But it was the graphics card that I was stoked about. It was still a mid-range piece of garbage, even at the time, but I thought it was a panty dropper. A GeForce Go 7600 with 256 megabytes of RAM and could barely play a game on the lowest settings. But I didn't care. I had an Alienware laptop and that meant more to me than actually using it. Less than two years later, I would deface the bottom of this thing. I don't know why I did it. Maybe it was because I had too much time on my hands or I was trying to fit in as my then girlfriend was trying to be a tattoo artist. I promptly hawked it on eBay for $300 so I could pay rent. The only thing I remember from the sale was the message from the buyer. This will be perfect for what I need it for. Needless to say, I was itching to get my hands on another one. Maybe it was the nostalgia. Maybe it was because I defaced the bottom of the last one and deep down inside I needed a second chance of not doing that again. Whatever reason, I went into a frenzy looking anywhere and everywhere to find one. I came to at the end of a laptop pallet auction totaling some $7,500 with me staring at three or four Alienware laptops listed on the pallet manifest. It's a true story. If you want to see the video, check out the card. It was quite a lot of work refurbing 33 laptops, but it was also a lot of fun. I had my Alienware fix for a short while, but I had to sell those laptops. $7,500 is a lot of ground to cover when you eliminate three $1,000 laptops from the pallet. I found myself right back on the marketplace, tapping frantically for my next Alienware fix. My wife was getting frustrated with the giant Alienware cardboard cutout I mounted on her side of the bed. Then one day it happened. I rolled over and the cardboard cutout made the first move. I didn't know what to think. It's just dead trees, I kept telling myself. Okay, who wrote this? Was that you, Pinksy? Is that you? You mad, bro? Are you mad? Then one day it happened. I was scrolling through the Facebook marketplace in a frenzy, tapping incoherently at anything shaped like an alien. I found this listing, free stuff, it said. The title jumped out at me. I studied the pic and spotted her in less than a second. I pinched the screen hard and fast like a teenager popping pimples before prom. Could it be? Is this it? I swiped to the next pic. Yes. Yes, it was. I could see right away that someone had abused it, but that was not gonna stop me from thinking that the only thing that could possibly go wrong with an alien or laptop sitting on the side of the road in a free bin was that its keyboard was missing a key. I stood up and started darting frantically around the living room, yelling at my phone to reserve the laptop. I needed to think fast. How was I gonna get there before anybody else? It was over 45 minutes away. Surely others have seen this post and had already grabbed it. I quickly messaged the lister to ask if the laptop was still there. I never received. An answer. I was running out of time. Every minute my laptop was in that box was another chance for somebody else to take it home and touch her. I thought of just jumping in the car and breaking every speed limit on the way to the laptop, but I figured I'd just end up second to the scene anyways. So I went into my bedroom. I was gearing up for an ugly cry when I spotted the Alienware cardboard cutout sprawled on my wife's side of the bed. I then remembered that I had a cousin who lived near the listing location. I messaged her frantically and exactly 20 minutes later, she messaged me back with this. It was glorious! I could smell the success through the phone. I had done it! 
I'd achieved what only some dream of. I was a dreamer once, a mere 30 seconds ago. All I've been doing for the past 30 seconds is just win-win winning all the time. I walked into my bedroom and ceremoniously announced my wife's return to her side of the bed. It was a week before the Alienware laptop actually showed. I was still convinced that absolutely nothing was wrong with the Alienware except the missing key. It didn't even have a power cord. If you're gonna toss away money like that, you could at least let me power it. Those things are like $50 minimum. I began studying the laptop, the markings on the bottom, the sauce found on the screen. I decided to go for it. I pressed the power button and eagerly waited. Nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. I figured the battery must be dead. So I dug out a legit Dell charger, as Alienware was acquired by Dell, and only Dell chargers work on Dell laptops. I plugged it in and waited. No battery lights, nothing. So I decided to take it for a spin. I halted, poised over the power button. While I took a deep breath, I thought to myself, let's hope this thing doesn't light on fire. I hit the power button and sure enough, she lit up. It soon posted and went into the OS. I couldn't believe it. My baby was alive and well. There were RGBs glowing on top of RGBs spawning more RGBs. I was gushing my approval all over the abuse keyboard. There was nothing that could stop me now. I had what I needed to keep on living and I was determined to restore this gem. I kept studying the state of the laptop. Obviously the hard drive needed to go. It was a slow spin up drive and was loaded with Windows 7. This laptop will only run with an SSD in Windows 10. I convinced myself. I began researching the specs of the laptop. An Intel i5-4200M at 2.5 gigahertz. Not too shabby. Eight gigabytes of RAM. That'll do. NVIDIA GT750M. Me rocky. It was all looking so good. I began pricing out a charger and a new keyboard. I was no stranger to fixing laptops and knew that replacing the keyboard would be annoying but doable. I coughed up $50 for the keyboard replacement and another 50 for a proper power brick. I would end up spending another $80 for a 250 gigabyte SSD, bringing my total to 180. This free laptop was starting to get very expensive, but I was not gonna stop. This is what I wanted. This is the price of free and I was willing to pay it. I broke open the laptop and replaced the keyboard. It took me longer than usual because honestly, Alienware laptops are not very nice when it comes to servicing them. Nonetheless, with a new keyboard being installed, a new SSD waiting to be slapped in, my life was starting to turn a corner. I was ready to forge forward with my new gaming machine strapped to my hip. Just winning, winning, winning all the time. There was only one thing left to fix, the battery. I put the battery aside, assuming it would be an easy fix. I fix laptop batteries all the time. There's only so many ways things can go wrong. I began with troubleshooting the lithium ion cells. I found two that were dead. Perfect, not a big deal. I have extra cells and a spot welder. This should resemble cake. I said out loud as I purchased yet another job well done Hallmark card for myself. I spot welded the two new cells into the battery pack and slapped it into the laptop. Bam! I proclaimed, but the laptop had other plans. She saw what I did and lashed out irrationally. The motherboard shot me directly in the heart, displaying, cannot identify this battery, GTFO, I ain't gonna charge it. Sweet Roswell, this alien was playing me dirty. The BIOS, I thought. Maybe if I poked around in the BIOS, I could figure this out. Well, immediately, I realized that I was locked out of the juicy options in the BIOS. This means I could not flash the BIOS from the flashing wizard. I did some research on how to force the motherboard to flash me or I flash it. Either way, I was gonna get what I wanted. I found a small program that could do the deed and gave it a whirl. The first time I tried to flash her, she presented a paradox. Need battery to flash, need the flash to read the battery. I dispensed with the theatrics. I broke out the USB keys to flash her from a boot prompt. Smack! She hit me directly in the moneymaker. My face. So I got to the Googles and plugged three hours of my life into it. This mobo was gonna take my slightly pink, awkwardly girthy battery, whether it wanted to or not. After three hours of opening new Chrome tabs, I was stuck. There was no way to defeat the board that did not involve way too much money or resoldering chips. See, Alienware or Dell had put security chips on the board. If you put in a BIOS password, there was only one way to get that password reset. You would have to call up Dell and profess your undying love for them before they would hand over the master codes. I can fake love with Dell. I'd been doing it with my wife ever since the cardboard cutout was removed from the bed. But Dell was different. They needed proof of your love in the form of an original receipt for the laptop purchase. There was no way I was going to be able to fake that. So I did the next best thing. I Googled it. I found a site that was dispensing master codes for Alienware laptops. I briefly squeaked and then got down to business. I tried every combination of every code that that site spit out. Nothing worked. 
I had already spent way too much of my life on this project and laptop as a whole. I was starting to see the curry-filled writing on the wall. That this laptop would never run outside of a wall plug again. There was no room in my life for a desktop disguised as a laptop. I pulled out the battery, harvested the lithium-ion cells, and disposed of the battery chip. I had to make an agonizing decision to list the laptop for sale on the very same marketplace where I found it only a few months ago. An elderly man reached out to me in a hurry to buy the laptop. I indicated that it needed a battery and he was okay with that. He said he was going to use it as a desktop replacement to play some games. I sold him the laptop for $330, making my total profit around $150. I never did reinstate the cardboard Alienware laptop cutout that forced my wife off the bed. I needed to move on. I learned that hanging on to a perfect picture of what I expected from a box on the side of the road with free on it made me spend hours of my life digging a hole. If I would have just picked up a couple of extra shifts or stood on the corner for just a little bit longer, I probably could have purchased a legitimate Alienware laptop to begin with. Sometimes you just need to reality check yourself in the middle of your curry forest or you may never get out of it. Thank you for watching. There is more tech stuff on the channel, so make sure you hit it up. Give it a subscribe. Touch my bell. If you like the video, Click the buttons. Let me know your Alienware story in the comments down below. I've got a jet. Pretty sure my wife just put the Alienware cardboard cutout in the washer. Really, Big C?